A 30-year-old female was diagnosed with breast cancer. She started with standard chemotherapy combined with hormone therapy. Many side effects, too much suffering, without any great results. She keeps wondering why this therapy does not work well for me, but works great for my 60-year-old neighbor who ha has also breast cancer. I am younger than her. I should respond better. She decides to visit our genetics clinic. Our genetic counselor suggests that she needs to perform genetic testing based on her family history of breast cancer. She found to be a carrier of a pathogenic variant in a gene called BRCA1. BRCA1 gene is involved in DNA repair and genomic instability. She starts new targeted therapy with great results. These drugs, called PARB inhibitors, work so specifically by inhibiting a certain protein in cancer cells, making them die. They're so specific in the way they work that usually only kill cancer cells without killing any normal cells, like in the situation of chemotherapy. Also, they're given orally to patients so they don't have to pay frequent visits to clinic for frequent infusions. So, her genome had the best answer for the ideal therapeutic approach for her. A precise genetic diagnosis led to a personalized successful treatment. More interestingly, these drugs can also be given with great success in women who have been diagnosed with ovarian cancer and who were also born with the same genomic alteration in BRCA1 gene. This truly demonstrates the paradigm of personalized genomics. Developing targeted therapies against the genetic causes of cancer, even across different cancer types. Finding a single cure for cancer becomes virtually impossible. Just because cancer, even on the same tissue, is not one disease. One size does not fit all. Cancer truly starts from our own body. Our normal cells that start growing suddenly without control. And because this dysfunction starts from our normal cells in our own body, these genetic differences reflect us as individuals. Add to that environmental influences, such as diet, smoking habits, or microbiome, or even influences above genetics, the so-called epigenetics. Human beings can be born with some genomic alterations, but also cancer can have unique genomic alterations, the so-called somatic mutational load. And we know, for example, in colorectal cancers with higher somatic mutational load, they have better prognosis, better outcome, and better response to immunotherapy. Because these genetic changes within the tumor produce foreign proteins that can be recognized and attacked by our own immune system. A major breakthrough that led to Nobel Prize in Medicine last year. The concept of personalized medicine is not new. Hippocrates, the father of Western medicine, was the first who introduced the term of idiosyncrasy, in which certain individuals have unique characteristics that either predisposes us or protects us from certain diseases. And the therapeutic approach really is based on these idiosyncratic differences among us. Genomics really gives us the chance to practice medicine in also a preventive mode, not only by focusing on people who already have got the disease. For example, let's think for a moment. What if the 30-year-old female had done genetic testing before she was diagnosed with breast cancer due to her family history of breast cancer? She would have known that she was born with this genomic alteration which increases dramatically her likelihood of developing this disease during her lifetime. 
This knowledge would give her the chance to take action if she wanted. For example, precautions measures, preventive mastectomy, or at least start mammograms earlier in her life. Cancer is a great example showing the importance of gen genomics in our life. But it's definitely not the only one. There are so many genetic diseases for which the genetic diagnosis has proved to be so important for us. For example, cystic fibrosis, a very serious heterogeneous disease caused by about 1,000 different pathogenic alterations in one single gene, a disease that was incurable till recently. However, a few weeks ago, FDA for the first time approved a drug that can be successfully given to patients with the most common cystic fibrosis alteration. Translational research can be a multidisciplinary effort. And during my doctoral studies, I had the pleasure to work closely with one of our patients. His name is Paul. His journey nicely illustrates our scientific approach from the bench to the bedside. He was diagnosed with bilateral kidney cancer at the age of 33. No symptoms, no family history. When he did his partial nephrectomy, we isolated the tumor and created the DNA in the lab where we wanted to study in depth in a very precise genomic level to see if there is any genetic etiology behind his cancer. Again, he did not have any family history, so we're really intrigued to see why this cancer has arised. He's now happily married with two children. However, his wife had multiple miscarriages in the past. So the products of conception were tested, and it was found that they carry a chromosomal abnormality. Chromosomes are the entities that carry our genetic information, our genes. And something can go wrong, like it can go wrong to our genes. For example, we can have totally loss of a piece of chromosome, meaning missing a whole genetic material. Or for example, you can have a phenomenon called, called, called balance translocation, in which piece of one chromosome has been translocated on the other chromosome. In this situation, most of the times, we don't have any disease because we don't have any loss of information. The genes has just translocated. But what has happened in this situation? So once we found out that the products of conception had this chromosomal defect, the next logic question was to test the parents and see if this was an inheriting condition. So Paul came to our genetics clinic, and we isolated his DNA, now not from his tumor, like we did before, but from his lymphocytes, to see if he was born with this chromosomal defect. We used a technique called spectral karyotyping, where we use different probes, different colors, to visualize if we have any abnormality on the chromosomes. If everything is normal, the chromosomes have one unique color. But in the case of the chromosomal abnormality, the balance translocation, we see dual color on chromosome 3 and 8. So we found out that Paul was born with this balance translocation defect. But how this phenomenon is associated with, with his kidney cancer we found that the translocation occurs at the breakpoints, and because of this phenomenon, part of one gene of the breakpoint has been joined with the part of the other gene on the other breakpoint, and we have the generation of a new fusion gene. A new gene is expressed. Normally, the two genes of the breakpoints act as tumor suppressor genes, meaning if everything is fine, they inhibit tumor progression. But the translocation occurred within a functional domain of the gene, and probably they compromise their normal function. 
So we found a link between this chromosomal defect and the likelihood of kidney cancer. Paul now knows that he was born with this defect, and this knowledge gives him the power and the choice to monitor this condition very frequently by having regular scre screenings, visiting his doctor. More interestingly though, during his last surgery, we were able to isolate his newly developed tumor and create kidney cancer cells in culture. So now, Paul has his unique, customized cell line that can be further manipulated in the future, possibly for a future tailored therapy for him. It sounds really challenging, and it is. But knowing the mechanism of the disease in our field is the first step. To us, challenge is a motivation. A motivation that probably will benefit not only Paul, but also future generations and other people that are predisposed to developing kidney cancer due to this specific chromosomal defect. So genomic medicine is a great tool that if used properly, can really help us lead a good life. The well-being, as ancient Greeks said, f -zin. Because genomic medicine gives us the opportunity to detect and predict a disease before it becomes life-threatening. And honestly, prevention is the best treatment. And also, it gives us tailored, specified therapies for our unique bodies. For example, the therapy in cystic fibrosis for patients who have the most common alteration. Or the same therapy to women with breast and ovarian cancer, two different types of cancer, two different organs, same drug because of the same genomic alteration that has caused the disease. So, we're really shifting our efforts from treating the disease to treat the individual who have the disease. We know how life works, what might go wrong, and what we can do about it. N of one patient-centric studies gives us the opportunity to elucidate the mechanism of the disease in a very precise genomic level. And we cannot really fix something that we don't know it is broken or why it is broken. Genomic medicine is like a butterfly effect where individual actions every day can eventually lead to a great outcome for everyone. Personalized genomics is not so personal as it might sound. Thank you.